Good morning. Today is Tuesday, October 4th, and we started our day the same as we did yesterday with breakfast and coffee at our hotel. Our 8 a.m. lecture is called Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe, and it's with John Ragosta. One of the many things that John talked about was the Virginia dynasty. The defeat of John Adams in 1800 by his vice president, Thomas Jefferson, who had previously served as Washington's Secretary of State, marked the true beginning of the Virginia dynasty, which is usually associated with what is now called the Democratic Republican Party. Jefferson served two terms before retiring in favor of his Secretary of State, fellow Virginian James Madison, often called the father of the Constitution. Although the War of 1812 greatly weakened Madison's popularity in the Northeast, he was nonetheless re-elected rather easily in 1812. Madison was then able to assist another Virginian, James Monroe, to be elected president in 1816. By the end of Monroe's first term, the Federalist Party had essentially disbanded and Monroe was re-elected in 1820 without any real opposition. Monroe's second term marked the end of the Virginia dynasty. Today we're going to three different locations and our first stop is going to be Highland. We are now pulling up to the visitor centers for Highland, the home of James Monroe. We're now going to start our guided tour. The original James Monroe home no longer exists. It is believed it burned down. However, in that general time frame, this 1818 guest house was built. It was then purchased by others and eventually um, the Masseys built a house there. And in 1850, an addition was added to connect the two. Based on research, they have found that the foundation of Monroe's 1799 house is in the front yard of the Massey's house. And in fact, it's partially beneath where the Massey's house is. And this is what they believe uh, Monroe's house looked like. The interior is all self-guided tour. The oversized carving of James Monroe at his home in Highland was sculpted out of Carrera marble in the 1890s. It was originally commissioned by the Venezuelan government as a tribute to the Monroe Doctrine, but it didn't make it out of Venezuela for quite a few years, and it was 1932 before it was placed in Highland. In case you've forgotten, the Monroe Doctrine was written in December of 1823 by James Monroe, and it basically said that the American continents are henceforth not to be considered as subjects for future colonization by any European power. It's time for lunch, so we're going to take the very short drive from Highland to Mickey Tavern. Now, I know it looks like it should be pronounced Mitchy, but they assure us it's pronounced Mickey. Mickey Tavern was established in 1784 by a Scotsman by the name of William Mickey. 
In 1927, the tavern was purchased by Josephine Henderson, who had it moved 17 miles to its present location close to Monticello. Although there isn't a lot of variety, the food they serve is delicious. It consists of southern fried chicken, homemade mashed potatoes and gravy, stewed tomatoes, black-eyed peas, green beans, coleslaw, whole baby beets, cornbread and biscuits, and of course my personal favorite for dessert was peach cobbler. After lunch, we walked down the hill to the general store. We checked it out and then we're going to load back up onto the bus. And now we take an even shorter drive to go from Mickey Tavern to Monticello, the home of Thomas Jefferson. We start at the Rubenstein Visitor Center. From there, we take a shuttle bus up to the top of the hill. We have just a little time to look around before our tour starts, so we're all going over to see the gardens. It's time for our guided tour to begin. The house is interpreted to the time of Jefferson's retirement, 1809 till his death in 1826, and about 90% of the architecture that you're going to see is original. Going in, when you pass over that threshold, you're going into a UNESCO World Heritage Site. UNESCO called this place a masterpiece of creative genius. And that's what you'll see, original bricks, original columns, the architectural ideas coming back from France were, were very interesting to the colonists at the time. 90% of the house is original and about two thirds of the artifacts that we have in our collections are original. I do believe that's an original Jefferson tree. All right, so we're gonna head on into the house. For anyone who'd like to use a rent, we have a rent just over here to my left. I'll take Ah, yeah, we say collected Indian. Wow. Artifacts. All right, so, you all hear like me? Good. But all right, so we are now in the library here at Monica. I remember trying to lean on anything, including the walls and the door frames. About 90% of the physical structure of the house today is still original. So we're trying to keep it at that 90% for as long as we can. Come on in, folks. Come on in. Yep, Jefferson can roll up from his bed into his bedroom or over into his cabinet. Did he not have sons that would have run this? So he did it. So we'll talk about actually in the next room, Jefferson's children. All right, folks. Now, if you all want to look back towards me for just one moment, I promise it'll be worth it. You have to imagine Jefferson bringing friends or more well known guests into this room. Go on in, folks. Go on in. Lafayette said to Jefferson, I gave my services and my money freely to the Americans because I believe they are fighting for a great and noble cause, freedom of all mankind. And yet here I stand nearly 30 years later and I see only a portion are free, the rest still held in bondage. Well, Thomas Jefferson being the politician that he was, he gave Lafayette a non-answer. He said he also thought the slaves should be freed, but he wouldn't say when. The rest of our time here at Monticello is free for us to roam and explore on our own. I'm currently under the dining room down in the basement 
and it's ingenious that the wine can then be hoisted from this room straight up into the dining room by those little doors on either side of the fireplace. At 3 p.m., we were able to meet Thomas Jefferson out on the West Lawn. He gave a great speech and then took questions from the audience. It's now time to head back to our hotel. Dinner was a buffet here at the hotel. And now at 7 p.m., we're going to be visited by an actor portraying retired President Monroe. Provide you a warm welcome. Thumbs. Forgive the mask. There's been an out outbreak of yellow fever in Loudoun County where I live, so I think I'll keep it on. Uh, I think you'll be able to hear me. I'm so pleased to be here. At my age, I'm, ple I'm pleased to be among the quick. <laughs> <laughs> this was another excellent performance where you really felt like you were interacting with James Monroe. I will close out this vlog now. This was uh, Karen's reminder that tomorrow we will be leaving sharply at 8 because we're going to Mount Vernon and it's a long drive.